Together for Jesus, hail and healthy, able and alive to see a new beginning in this nation. Jump me together. You've seen the rough part, you are now seeing the glorious part. God has given unto you the longevity of life to see the newness of Nigeria that has always been prophesied. To Him alone be all the glory, be all the honor, be all adorations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell somebody, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I'm not here to preach tonight. But I'm here to supply understanding as the Most High has instructed me. Uh, I came into the nation today, so I actually, you know, was just resting in my office I was sleeping when Pastor Evo came in. He himself also was contemplating whether to wake me up or not. And when he woke me up, my flesh didn't want to come. But I remember God spoke to me yesterday, and I think um, two days ago, on this message. On this word, which I present to you, the supply of understanding of what is happening now. The key word, ladies and gentlemen, is that everything that you see going on right now is not without the knowledge of God. God knows it all. And God is centrally involved in all that is happening in Nigeria right now. At the end of last year, when it was so dicey, nobody was able to speak. Whether there will be election or not, several people seem to be concerned because they said they were not sure. The Lord spoke to me and said, no, there will be election. Even before the end of last year. Before the end of last year. Where I, I, watch, I was watching a, a program where they said, okay, if you, maybe God has spoken to you that there will be election. If you're a prophet here, yeah, lift, lift up your hand. And everybody was quiet and I'm like, ah, God, are you not saying anything? That he said, no, there will be election. I came here boldly January 1. And before January 1, I kept saying it every time. And January 1, I mean, crossover into January 1, it was part of our declaration. Am I right? That there will be elections in Nigeria. And the Lord God Almighty has said that the man that will be coming in will be fountain of idea. A man that God has chosen to change. Ladies and gentlemen, the tide of things in this nation. And at the same time, I remember that God also spoke to us and I declared very clearly here. That there seems to be a lion that is roaring everywhere. That uh, the entrumment is his own entitlement. And of course, we also declared it here that before everybody, everybody will see how God will cage the lion. <laughs> is somebody catching what I'm talking about? And that the will of God shall be enthroned in this land. Oh, come on. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? You see, you don't make bold declarations except you have a heart from heaven. And ladies and gentlemen, everything is coming to pass the way God has said it. Now, without even us putting in anything in assistance to make it come to pass, save the fact that we take our time to pray unto this God who is able to speak and who is able to bring his word to pass. In 1 Kings chapter number 8 and verse 15, the Bible says, talking about the word of the Lord which he has spoken, of course, unto David, and which, of course, by his hand he has brought to pass. Whatever the mouth of the Lord speaks, only his hand can implement it. The hand of man and the organization of mankind is too small to implement it. 
Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a night of bringing all of us to the place of understanding that God is behind every event that is happening in Nigeria. Somebody will ask me, Pastor, what do you mean? Daniel chapter number 4 and verse 17. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible says, Now to the intent and the living may know that the Almighty ruleth in the affairs of men and he giveth it unto whosoever he willeth. To the intent that the living may know that the Almighty ruleth in the affairs of men that the Almighty ruleth in the affairs of men. So every affair in this nation, the Bible says there is a governor over it. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a majesty that sits on it and decides what we be. Ladies and gentlemen, in that nation and how it will go. Tonight, understanding will help us to know how God works. That the Almighty ruleth in the affairs of men and he giveth it unto whoever he willeth, to the basest of men. That is God. He will give it to the one that you think does not have the capacity or does not have the money or does not have the qualification or does not even have, ladies and gentlemen, the requirement. How can you look at a foreigner in a nation that has been established as the world superpower and decide that a foreigner that came in not only as a slave, but as a slave that was naked. Ladies and gentlemen, that as a slave that had no root to be traced. As a slave, ladies and gentlemen, that was motherless in every sense of it. And as a slave that had no other choice than to stay in slavery. Because, you see, the other choice he could have had was to return to his father's house where there were enemies that wanted to kill him. So the fear and the dread of death would never let him run out of Egypt. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So he was to be perpetually subjected to the servitude all the days of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, and the Almighty said, this slave that was not even an Egyptian, not even a slave born in Egypt, not even a slave that is, is, his genealogy is traceable, he said, that is the one that will make the prime minister of this world superpower called Egypt then. That the Almighty ruled in the affairs of men, and he give it unto whoever he will it. I don't know who I'm talking to here tonight. I want you to know that that is what is happening in Nigeria right now. And how does God do that? God has several ways of intervening in human affairs. And when he intervenes, the next thing he does is to take a matter and the Almighty we fold it, mold it, and let it come out in the shape that it wants to be able to turn around the entire affair around the nation. God does not need everybody to turn around the nation. He only needs a man. I repeat to myself, God doesn't need everybody to turn around the nation. He only needs a man. In Ezekiel, the Bible said, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30, you see, I seek for a man who can make up the hedge. Just one man. The Bible says, and there was none to take hold of me. Just one, just one person. God is not looking for so many. God is only looking for just one man. Just one. All through the scriptures, from Genesis to, the, to Revelation, it is always one man. The journey of mankind, one man. The journey of redemption, one man. And there was a man by the name Jesus. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, every move of God starts with one man. If God can locate a man, ladies and gentlemen, he can produce the extent and the degree of transformation he needs in any land through just that and one man. The Bible says he sent his light unto Jacob. <laughs> a word he sent unto Jacob, rather, and he produced light upon what? Israel. One man, Jacob, got the word. And then the illumination, ladies and gentlemen, was national. So if God can find a man, ladies and gentlemen, he has transformed the land. 
The moment we understand that, ladies and gentlemen, then you will know that all you need to do is to locate what God is saying and where what God is saying is and stop fighting it and just align yourself with what God is saying. Most times, that one man may be a ruler. If he's naturally not a ruler, he empowers him to be a ruler. The spirit of God in the life of a man signifies dominion, rulership, authority. When God finds a man, he releases his spirit on him. And that means dominion, authority, and power rest on him over any challenge that he is facing. Ladies and gentlemen, you will see the man, Jephthah, the Bible and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And then he, he, he went around 20 cities and he was destroying them. The day I was reading that and I've shared it in church, once I read and the Spirit of the Lord descend upon him, ah, and he's going for a battle, I will firstly stop reading the Bible. The first thing is just for me to begin to imagine what will happen. Because you know, you know the other? That just shows you where the pendulum of victory has already shifted. It is inevitable. It was delivered on this side. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because authority, the totality of the back of the host of heaven is with that man. Now, please understand. God doesn't need an entire army. If something is enough, he will finish all the Philistines. Just one man. <laughs> Just let the spirit rest on him. And the hair of Samson began to grow again. <laughs> Which simply means, the enemy thought your opportunity is lost. And I'm talking to somebody here. I'm talking to somebody here. In the name of Jesus, your hair is growing again. So, the discovery of one man by God is the placement of his will into the hands of the man. And if that man can just take that will and run with it, Ladies and gentlemen, victory is sure. God will never need a nation to deliver a nation. I repeat to myself, God will never need a nation to deliver a nation. God will always need one man. That is the first point I wanted to see. Uh, and then, let me make it clear. As I've said, that that one man will always be in authority by reason of the anointing on him, the empowerment on him, the office committed to his hand. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Let all the authorities of the nations come together against that man. They can't suppress him. In so far as he's standing in the center of that will of God, it's not possible. <laughs> and most times, you know, it's always very painful. When God finds that one man, and even believers don't know that one man, that's number one. Number two is that when God finds that one man, and believers don't know the purpose that one man is trying to enforce. You see, ignorance is one of the most dangerous things. You can pass through this season and never know what God is doing. It is only the advantage of hindsight that will let you understand later. that ah, I didn't know that was what God was saying, doing. Ah. When the Almighty has the capacity to show you, even in future, talk less of showing you when it is happening, and then it is now after the future has, I mean, the futuristic possibility of knowledge had passed, after the, uh, the occurrences of the event had even passed, that is even when now you, you are just realizing, hey, I think that believer is dead spiritually. John 16 verse 13, the Bible says, and when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he shall guide you into every truth. Uh -uh. He shall not speak of himself, but that which he receives of me, the same shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. That is to say, every believer must operate in the telescopic power of the Spirit. You must be able to understand things ahead of time. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You are in this church. Ladies and gentlemen, God has been speaking to us since last year. About these things, 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 from one layer to the other. From now, it is very clear, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. But as at the time we we're saying those things, those things were not clear. People were just wondering, what is he saying? But you know one thing: those who had understanding will know that God is preparing you ahead of time. Most times, the Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part. But the part that was given to you as at that time 
was sufficient for your advancement. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Now, so nobody here should be held in aberration or should be held in ignorance of what God is doing at this time in Nigeria. The Lord spoke to me. He said, when you get to Nigeria, my plan was to go home and rest today or whatever. He said, when you get to Nigeria, go and give my people this understanding. I said, yes, thank you, Lord. I will. So this is so important that we understand what God is working out at this time by locating a man. Now, in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1, the Bible says, The heart of kings and the hand of the Lord. And it turneth it unto whichever direction it will it like the streams of water, like the rivers of water. Now, I want you to understand one thing. When God wants to change the tide of things, he just looks for the ruler there, the person whose voice people will be. And God will go and touch his heart. He wanted, ladies and gentlemen, to lift Joseph. All he needed was a favor. You don't need everybody to favor you. You only need the right man to favor you. God is my witness. You only need the right person. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Because when the right person sits on your affairs, ladies and gentlemen, as ordained by the Almighty, every favor will come your way. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, Potiphar might have hated him. Please understand, the wife of Potiphar might have finished him. His brethren might have hated him. The Bible says the hatchers, ladies and gentlemen, they, they, they have wounded him so. Please understand, they, they went at him. Everybody might have hated him. But just one man, just one man, I prophesy that there are one man for your life, you will locate that person now. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Pharaoh. God just wanted to touch his heart with some dreams. Am I right? And God, God was, I mean, see, dreams. What are you talking about? I've interpreted thousands of dreams. I've not been appointed as a prime minister since I've been interpreting. Even more correct and sharper than Joseph's. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. So it's not about interpretation, it's about the hand of God touching the heart of Pharaoh. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. Am I talking to somebody here? It's about the hand of God touching the heart of who? Of Pharaoh. And the hand of God just moved the heart towards the side that will favor his will. Ladies and gentlemen, what Bwari is doing right now in this nation, the hand of God touched his heart. I'm telling you. It's a pity that it inflicted undue hardship on the nation. But at times, ladies and gentlemen, when you are in the will of God, you may suffer temporarily. Ken again said he never knew that you can be with the will of God and still be crying. He said he never knew. <laughs> Brad Billiak and he said, when God told him to go to Buku, ah, he wept like, he would sit down like this and, and cry from morning to evening. Cry. He said, ah! Oh my God. He said, he came with pains. But eventually, it's quite rewarding. He said, I never knew that you can be in the will of God and cry. Ah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there are times, ladies and gentlemen, it comes with pains. To be cast into the prison, to be sold as a slave, uh, to be lied upon. Uh, he was incarcerated for 12 years in a country where there is no electricity. Eh? To be in prison. Prisons don't have normal window. I think you know that. The window <laughs> may not be more than my, 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 my palm. To, it's not a place to be. And to be there for 12 years. You thought the guy was not crazy. You thought he thought was, he was like, like in the prison. No, you see, the, if the place was comfortable, you wouldn't tell the cop bearer, please remember me when you... I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Please understand, you can be in the will. And Egypt was the will of God for his life. You can be in the will of God and cry for a while. But it's never forever. After you have suffered a while. The Bible says the end result of everything is what he will say to you. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. That is the scripture God gives us. That is what we are going through in Nigeria now. 
The present suffering is only for a while. It's not forever. Ladies and gentlemen, and that suffering, ladies and gentlemen, is to energize the implementation. And ladies and gentlemen, to execute the perfect will of God over this nation. If that little suffering is not allowed by Buhari, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what would have happened in this nation. God touched the heart of that man to do what he's doing presently. What he's doing is so unprecedented. There is nothing in Nigerian history that matches with what Buhari is doing right now. Buhari might have gotten it so wrong in everything he ever did up until now. But right now, he's not the one doing this. A hand has grabbed his heart. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what is happening right now? It is the election and the finger of God. Only the blind spiritually will not see it. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, hear this. Some of us who have traveled abroad in different nations of the heart, when you come back to Nigeria, you cry. In my little adventure of, I mean, on the heart, I've been privileged to travel to maybe some few countries. And then when they hear you're a Nigerian, oh, they say Nigeria, very rich country. Nigeria, rich country. Nigeria, ah. And the next thing you will hear is, oh, her rich nation. Hoy rich nation. Nigeria. Hoy rich nation. Everybody talks about this. Ladies and gentlemen, I did oil and gas law. And one thing they taught us in oil and gas law is that Nigeria literally sit on gas. Nigeria literally sits on gas. You see gas flaring, see everything going on everywhere. The volume of gas Nigeria has eh, <laughs> is sufficient to power three, four, five continents for several years and decades. I'm telling you, Nigeria literally sits on gas. We have that level of wealth, that level of increase, that level of abundance. And the people of that same nation literally are running out of their country because there is no help for their soul in the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an aberration. It's so highly paradoxical. You can't match it, you can't explain it. As in, ladies and gentlemen, you can't explain it, what is happening. Nations that don't have gas, that are importing gas, Europe and the rest, they are powering their electricity with gas. Here is a nation that has gas in excess. They don't have electricity. How can you explain that? You dare not run a church service on, on Nepal, except you want to disgrace yourself during the service. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a big word for this nation. I'm not preaching, as I said. I'm only, you know, of course, you know me when I'm preaching. This is not, I didn't even plan what I'm telling you right now. I'm just speaking as it is from my heart. This is an aberration. In Judges chapter 5 from verse 6. Judges chapter 5 from verse 6, the Bible says, In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anat, in the days of Jael, he said the highways were unoccupied. All travelers went through the byways. They neglected the highways. Travelers would rather see it's like somebody going to, somebody going to, uh, let me look at a very good illustration I use. Somebody going to the highland 
and then you not decide to face um to go through uh redemption camp to enter into uh shagam and like that you now go 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 and enter a pair and then all the way then you now came to kui ah you are already no jota you are going to kui you know he said no 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 eh i should take uh, the tomilan bridge never I, I was told that place has become a life trap not a death trap in jesus name <laughs> and then people start going through that kind of long route they started by passing Israel. That's what he's saying. He said, situation was bad until high Deborah arose a mother in Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, the church of God has arisen right now. And I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, if there is anything to appreciate God for, by the time I finish today, that is one major thing we are going to do. We serve a God that answers prayers. The Bible says his ears are open to the cry of the righteous and his eyes are upon them. He said, call on me and I will answer you. He said, and I will deliver you from evil, from trouble. I will honor you and I what? I will be with you and honor you. Now, please understand. All the years you have been praying in this, in this place, Baba, Nigeria, Baba, we deliberately, everyone as they separate that time for, for the prayer over the nations. Ladies and gentlemen, go on, Sazo. And on every altar all over Nigeria, family altars, church altars, ladies and gentlemen, fellowship altars, ladies and gentlemen, all altars, even in the digital world, altars online, altars everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, all the prayers people are praying for this nation, there is indeed a prayer answering God. <laughs> I want you to know that it gives us the confidence to pray again and again. Ladies and gentlemen, your prayers are not wasted. Give him all the praise. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So what am I just saying, ladies and gentlemen? Nigeria, as at last year, <clears throat> when they wanted to do the primaries, we're all in this nation. Nothing about what I want to say is hidden from the eyes of all of us. We saw, ladies and gentlemen, how corruption had entered into the nation. At the primary level. They wanted to do primary elections. Parties to determine their candidates. We saw how money bags came in. It was, you know one thing? There is a way where something can be in the news and it's no longer hidden. <sighs> I thought many years ago, if you were corrupt, you don't even want the corruption to be known, right? Now, corruption is celebrated on the pages of newspapers. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That, you see, to say you are elected as a delegate, you know, it's all over the news. If you want to become rich, you say, how to become a delegate? I, I, you don't understand? You don't understand? Some people have started writing books on it. How to become what? A delegate. Because that is the shortest cut of becoming what? Very rich. <coughs> Delegates went to primaries and came back and threw parties in their different communities. Yeah, giveaways. Do you understand? Ogbariba, and you were even happy to come and declare it in your community. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, how do you think God will feel? The nation was bleed as a last year nation was heavily bleeding bleeding ladies and gentlemen i'm not lying to you the petroleum situation in nigeria is so bad the central bank governor spoke up um just some few months ago he said they were everybody's blaming Dezani, Dezani, Dezani. that during the time of Dezani, jonathan's time he get this he said the present situation in the nation right now is worse than that of Dezani's time it's after all the Zani remitted $3 billion, around $3 billion every month to the National Treasury. He said right now they are remitting nothing. That's why Nigeria doesn't have money. Several, a couple of oil companies have come to me, their leadership and all that. And I'm, they say, what's the, I said, what's the problem? They said they are producing oil, but they, if you pass it through the pipeline, it will never get to NMPC terminal. Looting. 
bunkery, everything. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So it is what what gets there that federal government was okay. When NPC has sixty percent, you know, holding in the whatever, so they take their own sixty percent. Um, the other the company that you know explore the oil, take your own forty, and the company that explore the oil, basically, of course, they will remove all their exploration charges. They, they will still be heavily taxed. About eighty something percent is the tax on, oil, on petroleum. So out of the forty percent, they still have about eighty something percent tax to pay. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And then they will have the little, you know, for themselves as profit. Now and then you now still go to score and steal everything. And you see, the sophistication of the stealing is so terrific. Because when you pump oil through the pipeline, as it is going, eh, for it to get where it is going with speed, you know, of course, we are, we are traversing over several kilometers. So they pump, we push it with water. Do you understand? And these people's machine will separate the water from the oil, they will pass the oil into their own uh, pipe, eh? those bunkers, and they will, they will allow the water to go to an NPC. So they were pumping oil, water was reaching an NPC. Somebody said, what kind of dilution is that? <laughs> is that what I'm talking about? So what am I saying, ladies and gentlemen, this is what is happening in the nation. Nothing coming in from there. And everybody's watching. It has gone so bad. They said they discovered a, a, a line, a, a pipe that was, <coughs> you know, taking uh, crude to the, to the ocean. And they said the thing has been lit for how many years? Hmm? Several years. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria has been going through a whole lot. The nation has been bleeding. A nation that is endowed with wealth. So every time Nigerians are praying, what do you think God will be looking at? God will be like, ah, what should I give to Nigeria that I have not given? Is it population? Is it, is it dams? Water? This? That? Please understand, is it petroleum? Is it gas? Is it, the nation sits on gas. What is it? Ladies and gentlemen, this nation has, ladies and gentlemen, been bastardized by the hands of corrupt people. And they are still the one fighting now. But I'm letting you know, ladies and gentlemen, God has stepped into the affairs of Nigeria. What am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? With this enormity of the tragedy that has befallen this nation over the years, we saw the primaries that happened last year. Ah, friends, the righteous were bleeding in their heart when there was a particular primary that me I followed. <clears throat> One of the contestants, Pastor was with me. I took the phone. I was speaking with him. In fact, he took second. He said, Pastor, <laughs> and his wife, he said, Pastor, there is no way, man or God, we can get through with this. I said, why? He said, the man, Release 100 billion to win the primary. And the wife said, Pastor, even if you are stealing, he said, you will need 300 years to steal that kind of money to win this kind of primary. Can you imagine? Here was a former minister, a former governor, saying that. And my heart was bleeding. I said, Is there no EFCC there to arrest them? <sighs> He said they were given so 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 five five million dollars, so 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 to two million dollars. So how we de please understand, ladies and gentlemen, you will see somebody who is obviously sick with the bleeding nation of the bleeding I mean nature of this nation, and you still say yes. Just give us give me money. I don't care what happens to Nigeria. I can sell this nation. Let the poor remain poor. Let me just have that $5 million and let me go and build my own house. Let me just have that $5 million and let me go and buy my own land. Ladies and gentlemen, for how long will Nigeria go through that? Now, please understand, anybody who is distributing money is obviously corrupt. Let's be honest. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Anybody who is doing that is obviously what? Now, the question is, did he, is this is his money? Because, you see, at times, if you don't understand these people, they sit down ahead of time to plan. 
They look at it. They say, okay, election is coming. It's my home turn for this, for that. And you know the next thing they do? They may change the governor of a state they are sitting on because they can see ahead that if that man is in the second time, he won't give him all the money he needs because he doesn't need him at that time. So bring somebody else who needs him for a second time. They, 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 they are pro politically strategic. But there is a God that holds the wise in their craftiness. There is a God that holds the wise in their what? In their craftiness. Far ahead of time, God can look at them. God said, no worry. Do you understand? There is a junction where I will step in and I will turn the situation around. And that was what happened. So they have been planning this thing you know, ahead of time. Storing up the money. And then at the end of the whole day, you know what they did for the primary? They paid them part. I don't know how much they finally paid them. But let's say they paid them 50 naira each. You know it's in dollars. And you know it's in thousands. So they paid them, let's say 50 um, naira each. The delegates. They said you will collect 30 and go and vote. Now if this man wins, then we'll give you balance of 20. Who doesn't want to collect balance? And you collected thirty thousand dollars, and they said if he wins, you come and collect balance of twenty thousand dollars. Who doesn't want to collect balance? And the other candidate just came and they spoke very nicely, from the rivers of Ethiopia to the boundaries of Bahesa. This nation, hold oh, this nation, is going to be changed. You're going to bring in technology. We're going to deploy the latest. We're going to thank God for all these things you are saying, sir. But what is the practical, peculiar meaning of this environment? Most especially as it concerns the nature of our pocket and the circumstances of our back account. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So, other people spoke, thank God. You know what our people were just doing? They were just writing his name. The one who paid. I'm telling you the truth. That was what happened. Real life money. I spoke, not that, you know, it's a different when they say, you know, news carried everything. That one, this one is not news. I spoke with the person who came second. Life there. And he was telling, Pastor, this is what is going on here, life. And you can imagine how my heart was bleeding. The Lord, when will Nigeria change? If this man is the will of God, will you use money to buy the will of God? Can't people just sit down and think? Whatever you deprive, you see, you will see a state government not able to do anything. Not able to. Ladies and gentlemen, there are states in this nation. I was checking the resources of different, I mean, whatever. There are states that their high jihad is very high. I'm telling you the truth. There are states in this nation that their high jihad in four years, IG, internet generated, not even the one federal government gives. It's up to three trillion. I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Put it online. Check the idea of the state where you are. You will see it. Parano. I'm checking for years what it is. And how oh, you mean? Look at look. Go around the town yourself now and see if the evidence of three trillion is on the road. There are facts that speak for itself. Let's be honest from our heart. But the question I just want to say to you is this. When things are like this in this nation, and everybody's keeping quiet, I'm not speaking for anybody. I'm not speaking for any whatever. The only thing I just want to do is to supply the understanding as the Almighty spoke to me. That my will is not bought by corruption. If you are praying for Nigeria, and you are praying for the will of God in this nation, please know, that the will of God will never come to pass on the pathway of corruption. The fact that corruption is in that element is to let you know that this is not the will of God. It is just a prolongation and a protraction of the victimization and the suffering of this nation. If such things are enthroned, if it is the will of God, let it come on the plain note of... 
And in different parties, that's how the thing went. Oh. Not in one party. Oh. I'm not just speaking against a party. No. Then the question is, Lord, is this how this will continue? Ladies and gentlemen, some are so prepared that, you know what? Some are so prepared that they can pay. You see, now, when the Lord brought Buhari into power, if there is anything Buhari has done well, it's the electoral process that he brought into Nigeria now. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if there is anything that man has done well, eh, is this new election that I think I can say thank God for. He has done several other things well, though, but this one, eh, eh, I say thank God for it. And that is God walking through one man. Now, let me let you know this as I'm running off. This man has gone through a whole lot to put these things together. We thank God. But I don't know whether he was outwitted when he himself got to the primaries and he saw better politicians, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> taking better. You see, candidature is for better politicians. <laughs> you know the meaning of that? <laughs> In the Nigerian sense of it. <laughs> when the wife of a president one time started a program called uh, rural, uh, Better Life of Rural Women, they change it in reality because the rural women's life were not affected. You just saw that it is the wife of, uh, you know, the director of Mamsa. Uh, the they are the ones getting fat. They are the ones using the BB vehicles. They bought chips for <coughs> better life for better women, uh, rural women. But the wives of all those big, big officers at see the ones using all those jeeps. The rural women were not really affected. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So they said, look, the reality. This thing is better life or better women. Is somebody catch I'm talking about? So that's exact. So better politicians. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that situation just went like that. And the Lord said unto me, all through last year, my heart was bleeding since that time. I said, God, is this what will happen again in Nigeria? Are we still going to have an enthronement of a system? that will still bring poverty, that will still bring shame, that will not allow your power to move like this? Are you going to, are some people going to strip, you know, money from government to win election? Maybe the government of the nation, maybe the government of some state, I don't know, to win election and this and this and that, and then we are expecting God to use them and change the lot of Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know but you can't, our uh, people say, he later about it all money. <clears throat> Any house you build with saliva, erosion will bring it down. Do you understand? You can't build with unrighteousness and then arrive at the righteous answer. I don't know how it works. It doesn't work that way with God. Every nation that ever excel, ladies and gentlemen, their foundation was laid on truth. So when the electoral process was brought up, the next thing I saw was that we had um, this, uh, you know, they do face recognition and all that. And that has been tested in about two states now. It worked 100%. Which is to say that you cannot go and vote in two different places again. The machine that, that reads your face, the machine that reads your face, once it reads your face, you can't go to another place and go and vote. The machine automatically stores it. Do you understand me? In the central system. And that is to say that if the machine recognizes 10 people in this pooling boat, you cannot say 50 people voted there. Do you understand me? That means only the 10 can vote. Ladies and gentlemen, and that is, you see, it's one of the greatest achievements. And you know what? It worked in two states. Oshun State was one, just a few months ago. It worked 100%. So the only thing politicians are left with, ladies and gentlemen, is to buy votes. And that is the worst kind, ladies and gentlemen, of... In fact, I've never seen that level of corruption anywhere in the world. You know what they do? They will tell you, yeah, go and vote, snap it. <clears throat> and come and show us that you voted for us, we'll give you 5,000 there. Can you imagine? 
vote. They said they did it in, I don't know, that they said they did it in Washington State. They said, I don't know that. It was so bad. So vote buying now became a very serious ambassador that they moved in money heavily into that state, as we were told. And they were buying, and they were buying. And you know what? They said the two parties did it. So the one who can pay higher, this one is negotiating um, um, uh, 5,000 naira, and that one is saying, no, 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 it's 10,000. We are paying 10,000. We'll pay you 10. Just, they don't even care how, and in fact, they said one came in with dollars. Now, please understand, a journalist who was there was sharing this information. They saw bags of dollars, and they were distributing dollars. $20, $50, just a month ago. And the one who brought in dollars, that the, the, he came in to beat the other guy. Uh, he beat the, that one at one hour. That one, uh, the, it was the one they announced as the owner, as the winner. So this, ah, he said, Pastor, they said they distributed that thing everywhere. They, they were there life, life like this. But they were distributing it in their eyes. They call it vote buying. I said, are there no policemen? Are there no this? They said, ah, what are you talking about, Pastor? <laughs> Money. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a nation where, except God moves in a special way, this election would have just gone that same way. And you know one thing, some people probably in their mind, they have already counted and costed it. And they, they have done their calculation. If we pay them, you see, if you, if you check the statistics of federal um, presidential election in this nation, about 16 million. The, the, any man of, um, any president that won, most times, the one we, you see that the total vote that he had is about around 16 million, most times. 16 million, 15 million. That's how it is. So they say, uh, maybe even if in our own case it's 20 million, let's see their calculation. If we pay them 5,000. 5,000 5, for 20 million people. Uh, if we pay 20 million people, 10,000. Uh, 10 naira is 200 million. If we pay 20 million people, 100 naira is two billion if you pay 20 million people one thousand is 20 billion if you pay them five thousand ladies and gentlemen it is 100 billion i mean we can generate 100 billion what are you talking about whatever they are sitting on generates more than that and they will distribute the money and you see the hardship in this nation is so bad that you in fact in some state they will tie two people together they said, oh, yeah, go, to, to call, call 500. Oh, yeah, just vote. I'm telling you, rural areas, they will see 5,000, they won't vote. And you know one thing? That thing will just, the conscience of people will never be allowed to find expression. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. That is to say that you have swayed the election on your side again. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, do we continue in this corruption? And we are expecting God, light, to move in Nigeria. Let's go to other nations. We go to Dubai. We go to London. We go to U.S. You go to Canada. You see their streets. You see those nations most times don't have natural resources the way Nigeria. Are. You see development. You will be like, Lord, what is going on? Ladies and gentlemen, God looked at that thing, and God, God was like, you know one thing. I'm going to bring a system that will change everything. All I need is one man. And they went to talk the other the president. After the primaries were held, the president was held about. He had his own candidate. I watched one interview they told him. They said, yes, yeah, but he's not going to tell them. Of course, whether his candidate was right or wrong, I don't know. Because at times God will allow some things to also happen to him, to pain him. Do you understand what I'm talking about? To make him also do some things. Ah, yes, no? You don't understand? When the father of uh, the wife, Sam, Samson, wanted to marry, gave the wife to somebody, somebody else. You know, that was the thing that, that ignited fire in Samson. The thing paid Samson, and Samson from that day started fighting the Philistines. So God will allow some certain things to happen to steer somebody into action. Say, hey, you people, I told you I had my own candidate. You, you stood against my candidature. They said, hey, let's do consensus. I said, no. Hey, you stood against it. You stood against that. And you wipe off my own candidature. 
I mean, my own candidate I had. And the man said, look, he said, you governors, all of you, you choose your own successors, have you? He said, you should please, no, I never intervened. He said, allow me to choose my own successor too. They wipe it off him <laughs> with money. The man was there like this and he saw how everything turned. <laughs> he said, eh, I didn't know politics go this way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but don't worry, I will change the tide. I'm still the president. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? That incident opened his eyes. He walked out of that place, ladies and gentlemen, and God began to touch his heart. The next thing, I was watching the one, whatever, where the, uh, the, he said, he called the CBN governor. How do we address this situation? And he said, the best thing is to change the Naira note. And the best thing is to this, the best thing is to that. All what is happening now is to address that situation. It's not that Nigeria doesn't have money to spend. It's to address that situation. So that this election will go. Sir, they said Nigeria had 1.9 billion naira in circulation. I mean, uh, printed notes, rather. They said 900, 900 billion was, was in circulation. Somebody called me highly placed in America and was giving me this analysis. I said, what? Americans are following. He said, he said, when they said they should recover money, 500 billion was recovered. He said, where is the remaining 500 billion? The politician refused to release it. Thinking that at the end of the day, now they will force him by court or by this, by that. He will, he will, do you understand what I'm talking about? And will allow the, the money to be used. No problem. It's not that that man is adamant against the Supreme Court. That man's heart is under the mighty hand of the Almighty. So that the consent of a common man who has suffered, who is now operating by divine wisdom, eh, can be given expression on the ballot paper. Because until Jia Kunigma, ah, when people suffer, when America suffered under uh, 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 George Bush Jr. He ruined global economy. Completely. He went to fight Afghanistan. When it was, that was, that was why, that was how Obama came in. Some certain people will never see power. God walks through circumstances. Don't ever forget that. He rules in the affairs. Of, he, hardship is what brought a black man to be the president of America. It will never happen, naturally. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Americans saw hardship. There was global economic recession 2007-2008. And then, uh, what was the name? McCain, who was in the party of George Bush, who was, who was to contest uh, under the conservative, said, uh, no, 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 we'll continue fighting. America must continue to, to is the policeman of the world. We continued. Americans said, you have ruined our economy all because you are fighting Afghanistan. What is our gain in Afghanistan? And you are coming to say you still continue fighting. Obama said, look, we are going to use diplomacy to resolve matters. They said, this is the man who follow. We will say, forget about the skin color. We, uh, over 20 something million jobs lost. They said, please, oh God, forget. This is not, America is still discriminatory. I think you know that. They said, forget skin color. We need you. Uh, you done, anybody? So when God moved that circumstance in America, the will of God was established. Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? Everybody that saw Obama knew the hand of God was on Obama. Obama. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is exactly the same thing that is happening now. Please have understanding. So, they are going to Supreme Court to fight to this, to that, using the hardship that people are facing as an excuse. No, it's because they, they have stored that money to induce election. That is what is actually shaking their heart right now. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? That is what is moving their hearts right now. It's moving the hearts of nations. And they want to rather fight. Somebody would think these people had the common man in mind. It was not the common man they had in mind. They had their selfish hand, their ambition in mind. Why fighting? If you have done well, go and vote now. Go and I mean, let leave people to judge if you have done well. Let people judge whether you should be allowed in or what or not. So you have gone around and campaign. Am I right? Uh -huh, now let people now why campaigning to them and still giving them money again. 
bribing them to vote for you. That means you yourself, you can see insufficiency on your part. If you are sufficient, you don't need to pay anybody one naira. Baba Debo, he said, there are two candidates complaining right, right now. I'm paying money everywhere for all their campaigns. But there is a candidate also that goes to campaign and is not paying anybody any money. I was on the, you were with me on the plane with him. I was on the plane with that candidate. He's not paying anybody any money. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's the one that will enter. And I'm not saying he's not the one. What I'm just telling you is that, you know one thing? Abba. If this thing is the will of God, you don't need to stress. You don't need to pay. Let God do what is in his heart. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You know what the two spies told um, the children of Israel? The ten spies came with the bad news. The two spies said, ah, I never forgot that statement. He said, if the Lord delights in us, he will give us that land. If the Lord delights in any candidate, he will take you there. Buari did not have money. God took him there. Uh -uh. What are you talking about? If Apostle John did not have money, he was in prison. They, he came out, he said, not the contest again. But all of them came to beg him. Did God not take him there again? If the Lord delights in you, uh -uh, you don't need to pay. You don't need to pay. Our pastor John was in prison when God told me, he said, the next Nigerian president, so pastor, I told my people they wanted to beat me up. I said, but that was what God told me. Did it not come to pass? If the Lord delights in you, he will take you there. He will follow my is to let you know, okay? you yourself, you know, there is a bankruptcy on your part. If the Lord delights in you, cost be any man who wants to buy votes in Nigeria. I want a resounding amen in the house. Anybody that wants to sell the liberty of this nation, I say, cause be the man in the name of Jesus. If the Lord delights in you, leave it. God will take you there. You have campaigned, right? As I am here, you know we have different parties in this church, so I'm not talking for any party. Eh? I am, as I am here, I'm just telling everybody here. Please, let us go and vote with a plain heart. This suffering is only for a while. After the election, you will see how everything will be reversed back. Is somebody catching on what I'm talking about? As the Lord has spoken unto me. So please, let us just, you know, enjoy a little bit more. So that we can enjoy forever. If one righteous man can come into power, just one. One right thinking man. There are some that's, that, that have ruled local government before. They looted everywhere. They ruled states before. They in fact, they, they will claim all the land of the state. They will put their own industry and companies everywhere. There are some that have done that. There, there are some that ruled. Even, among, I mean, they will say, look, go and check the state where I ruled. They say, I never collected any man's land. I, I said, no contractor did high hole. He said, when I was living, I left 70 billion in the treasury. God, the award as the, as the best state in, in education during his time. Best state in here during his time. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God, several. Please understand. There are some like that. Please, your service record will speak for you. Nigerians vote wisely. This is what God is doing right now in Nigeria. And this understanding has been supplied to you. So this hardship is only for a while. I round up with 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. Can we all read as we stand up? First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10. Our hanko scripture for 2023. So we all read one, two, go. Oh Grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. I had a vision on Sunday morning. Is it Sunday morning? I saw a big politician in the presidential race in a dream, a vision of the night. Pastor Sin was with me and I narrated it to him. And in this vision, this politician wanted favor to win this present election. This is a true life story. Whatever I see in my dream is exactly the same. A number of you who work with me for years, you can tell. And the, this politician went to carry a woman. This woman is a mother of two children. The first son is around 10 years old. The second is around six, six, between six and five. 
life like this and they slaughter this woman and they pour her blood into a, a calabash and bury that woman and this politician stood on that place out there fear you out there way life i never i've never seen that kind of thing in my life before ladies and gentlemen by the election of grace you know i'm a prophet this is what the almighty showed me and the 10 year old one ah ladies and gentlemen i woke up with bleeding and crying now what what level of wickedness is this all because you want to win election in nigeria they will die before their time. The Lord said this is what they have been doing. He said with this blood ritual now, everybody will start favoring him. So that is how he has exerted his dominion over the years. We are going to pray. Father, Baba Fagbarare in Nigeria, Baba Fagbarare Baba Fagbarare In Nigeria Baba Fagbarare Aki duwa waraye Le monta ju we pray Jesu ni koleba Lori aye gogo Faba faba rare Baba faba rare Baba faba rare Baba faba rare Baba rare Once again, lift up your two hands and sing that song. Baba, Baba, in Nigeria. before we can see you on the move daddy complete this move complete this move complete this move somebody begin to pray choir continue singing Daddy, you have started the move. Complete the move. Lord, you have started the move. Complete the move. Daddy, you have started the move. Complete the move. Let this move not be truncated again in the name of Jesus. Nigeria, by the power of the Spirit of the living God.
by the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God we declare Nigeria into the center of this perfect we've been implemented in the name of Jesus it doesn't matter the level of their ritual powers their occultic engagements by the anointing of God I stand on this altar and declare that that which they provoke for favor is turned to disfavor on their bodies as the almighty showed me and i saw it live i i was watching like a film like this life life and my body was tearing i prophesy in the name of jesus no we profession against Nigeria. We prosper in the name of Jesus. Every weapon to bring into captivity the minds of the people of this nation to vote for them. That weapon today is reversed back on their heads. It's reversed back on their heads. It is working against them. Everything will work against the wicked. And the righteous is enthroned in this nation. Sear the spirit of the Most High God. Now listen. Buhari might have been a very tough season. Not might have. He is a very tough season. When he was coming into power, God told me this man had the spirit of impoverishment. I shared it. I shared it. And I think um, the, the last uh, eight years, can testify to what I'm talking about. Everywhere seems to have been seriously impoverished. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, toughness seems to be the character of certain agents of God. For the first time, on that came on to me when God was speaking to me about John the Baptist. He said, do you know John the Baptist was a foreigner for Jesus? He said, Buhari is a foreigner for the main man that would change the tide. And I was like, God, what are you saying? And the Lord said unto me, he said, under John the Baptist, everything was tough. Ah! When the people came, he said, what are you talking about? He said, you Pharisees. He said, you will perish. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said the house is laid at the root of the hole. He said, if you don't repent. He said, ah. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Pharisees, the Sadducees came. He remarked, the man was placing curses on them. Go and read it. Matthew chapter 3, from verse 1 to 10. And he operated in the spirit and power of Elijah. A anybody who wants to name his son Elijah, family members will call him. Well, wow. any child call Elijah, they are always tough. Except the one we have in DGCC. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Ah, Elijah represents a man that will call family on the nation where he is dwelling. He himself, oh, and he didn't have any plan of survival rather than God. Eh? Do you understand what I'm talking about? And he's there. And you see, what he converted a rich nation to Somalia. For three and a half years. And you see, the woman said to hit her, 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 her last with her son and they would die. That means Elijah saw many people dying. They were eating their last. And he was comfortable still sitting. Could they pray quickly and change? That's a very tough man. Do you understand? Now I said John the Baptist will preach in the spirit of power of that kind of person. <laughs> but you know one thing? Elijah opened the door for Elijah. Who had the double portion of the anointing and removed severity from Jericho, from their land, from this, from that. And you know, he was a giant blessing. <laughs> and then John the Baptist opened the door for Jesus. He said, make straight the way of the Lord. That is exactly what Bari is doing right now. I will make it straight. So that nobody will be able to mobilize resources to <coughs> that's what the man is doing. Lift up holy hands, give God all the praise. <laughs> give God all the praise for what God is doing right now. Oh, yes, Father, we thank you because you have understanding tonight. We are not walking in ignorance, it's a temporary situation, but we are sure on Saturday a new beginning starts for Nigeria. Uh, can we please go ahead and just thank God for the new beginning of this nation? <coughs> Let's give God a praise for the new beginning of Nigeria. Let's thank God for the new beginning of this nation. Everybody under the sound of my voice, I just wanted to thank God for the new beginning of this nation. You do mighty things. You do glorious things.
somebody thank you for what he has done. You do, man. Send us and the microphone here. Let's thank you for all he has done in Nigeria. It's a new beginning for us forever. watching me online or you're here you want to give your life to Jesus the only solution to the land is Jesus and the only solution to our individual lives is Jesus you desire a solution as God is working it out for Nigeria you want God to work it out for you as well nobody who ever think this kind of thing can happen in this nation where politicians can be handicapped from buying votes. How shall it be? That's the question anybody could have asked. But listen, God knows the way to take you to where he's taking you to in life. If only you can allow him in your heart. I just want your hands laid on your chest and talk to him and say, Father, I accept you tonight. Into my life, darling Lord Jesus, please come in. I open up my heart to receive you tonight. Come in and make your dwelling with me. Thank you, Jesus. I believe. I believe. I believe. In Jesus' name. Father, as many as have just given their lives to you, oh God, we receive them into the kingdom. The Bible says, whoever cometh unto you, you will know why I cast out. Thank you for receiving them. In Jesus' name. You have any sickness in your body? Somebody has some pains around the hips area. Just lay hands there. Your belly and hips. Someone else is around your, your leg. Lay hands there right now. The power of God is moving even in the bodies of people right now. Leo Prali That headache is gone. That high pain is gone. That condition negative in your body right now. I command it to vacate your bodies. You are healed right now. You have received the bread of life. Go. In the name of Jesus and live in liberty. In Jesus' mighty name. Now everybody rise as I bless Nigeria. Father, after the order of the prophetic, I bless this nation. That the ambition of men will never come to pass in this nation. The will of God comes to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the one that give it unto whosoever you will it. Daddy, we are not saying it is this person. And we are not saying it is that person. But one thing we know. Father, this move is to provoke the part of your will. Holy Spirit, wherever you bring out, we accept as your will. Father, take the glory. Take the honor. Take all adorations. We stir up the hearts of all Nigerians to take up responsibility to go and vote and to turn around the tide of realities in this nation. We we'll give you all the praise because it's our time for a new Nigeria. In Jesus' mighty name. Nigeria is blessed. Nigeria is blessed. Nigeria is blessed. Our youth shall not run out again. Nigeria is blessed. Mark my word. People will start relocating back into Nigeria. <laughs> By the prophetic power of the Spirit, that gate is open in the name of Jesus. And to everybody under the sound of my voice, every good thing that has eluded your life, they start returning back in the name of Jesus. 
It's a good season for everlasting celebrations. Put it together for Jesus, somebody. Come on, take your seats. Hallelujah. I think we should just package our offerings for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, tell somebody I understand. Oh, uh, you. So don't complain about Bari again. Eh? He's working out the will of God. If I don't have phone, I'll come around at least 200. Because they don't store money in 200. Ah, money for to buy vote is stored in 500 and 1,000. Along for my smartness. So let people vote their conscience. Amen? And let us see who will win. Amen? You know, if they were to bribe, Obama did not have probably some certain kind of money would have used to bribe in America. <laughs> the ruling party would have pumped all the money. Am I right? And McCain would have continued fighting. Global economy could have been, com I, mean, I mean, finished com completely. But thank God that righteousness reigns. It's reigning in Nigeria forever. Amen. Let's package our offerings beautifully for Jesus. Write in the check name of the ministries, Divine Glory Christian Church, as it is at the back of your envelope. And then, should in case you are, <clears throat> you want to pay through the POS machine, God bless you out the POS machines out the back. Uh, you want to make transfers, you have the account of the ministry being projected right now. God bless you. And then, you want to probably use your ATM card, you can go to our website, www.dgccinternational.org. DGCCINTL.org. While we were away, a message was sent to us, was sent to Pastor Sin. They said a politician had carried some, so, 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 somebody came from that place. The person also was in politics and was telling this person who was also in politics, was now sending a message to us that so, 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 so million had been carried to so, so, so place. To share for election, whatever. I said, but with this thing, I said the thing is painful. He said, because the money is in hold 500 and one. What did ah? What did distribute open network in here? What the parish shall have to be allowed to be November, December? But you know what? I'm going to go around the parish by any Babay Shaber. Eh? She had a great time, Joseph, with the Pagueta. If by any God is just starting with you. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. Lake Susanna Tugsa. Rise or come on and bless it in tongues. Axos in a copra league rockstar. Ha 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 ha. Come on now. Ba ba she la she pe. God bless you. God bless the offerings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Even if in the next four years all that God lays is a foundation, it's still a step into progress. When you're laying foundation, nobody seems to see what you are doing. You are still going down. Am I right? But you know what? It's a major step onto progress. Friends, we are not retrogressing anymore. We are moving forward. Lift up holy hands and give him praise. Let's just thank him. Let's just thank him once again. You do mighty things. Real things. Your own faithful God. Awesome is your name. The Lord bless and keep you all the way home in Jesus' name. You stayed here tonight. Miracles are waiting for you as you go. Go in favor and power in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. A cool Awesome. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 28 28 1839. 
or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl on youtube search divine glory christian church our twitter handle is at dgccintl stay blessed